you are welcome to this brief preview of the book of Genesis, chapter 4, at the Powellhurst Men's Study, the 2nd of February, 2023, reading from the New International Version. We have version. several learning objectives for this session. By the end, a participant should be able to identify several first events to understand what makes offerings acceptable to God, to recognize spiritual safety and danger, to distinguish karma from justice, to situate Genesis 4 in human history, and to call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ on Adam's and Eve's first children. Adam made love to his wife Eve, and she became pregnant and gave birth to Cain. She said, With the help of the Lord I have brought forth a man. Later she gave birth to his brother Abel. The paragraph starts with the Hebrew conjunction, followed immediately by the subject of the sentence and a perfect tense verb, which indicates that we are starting a new narrative. There is no necessary time sequence with the preceding material. The term make love is literally to know, as in carnal knowledge. And the term with the help of the Lord in the Hebrew is simply two words at the end of the sentence, I have obtained a man et the Lord, et being the marker of the accusative case, interpreted here to mean with help from the Lord. Cain's and Abel's first offerings. The giving of offerings had not been commanded, but was an early practice by human beings in gratefulness towards God. Now Abel kept flocks, and Cain worked the soil. In the course of time, Cain brought some of the fruits of the soil as an offering to the Lord, and Abel also brought an offering fat portions from some of the firstborn of his flock. An offering is simply a gift to show homage. These are not sacrifices for sin. Both fruit and meat were acceptable food offerings, both before the law and after the law was revealed. God had commanded both to care for the flocks and to till the soil so both men's work was acceptable to God. Yahweh's response to their offerings. The Lord looked with favor on Abel and his offering, but on Cain and his offering he did not look with favor. So Cain became very angry, and his face was downcast. If you are studying this passage in a group, discuss together this query. Was it his offering that made Abel acceptable, or the man that made his offering acceptable? Then read from the book of Hebrews, By faith Abel brought God a better offering than Cain did. By faith he was commended as righteous when God spoke well of his offerings, primitive emotion and primitive divine law. Then the Lord said to Cain, why are you angry? Why is your face downcast? If you do what is right, will you not be accepted? But if you do not do what is right, then sin is crouching at your door. It desires to have you, but you must rule over it. Professor Casuto of the Hebrew University has remarked that this is one of the most difficult and obscure biblical sentences. He notes that the term translated crouching in the cognate Akkadian language can mean a kind of demon or an agent of the king. Let's look more closely at this verse. First, in an interlinear version, providing a gloss for each Hebrew term. Then let's look at the grammar. The sentence starts with the particle he which means this is a query, a question. Will not, if thou doest well, then to lift up, lift up what? Your face? But if not, but if not thou doest well, then at the door, 
is sin, a feminine noun, a crouching, a masculine participle, which cannot be describing sin, but may be referring to a divine being, which later was called a demon. And unto thee is his longing, but thou shalt rule in it, or rule over it. Even before the law, humans were responsible for their behavior. The first murder. Now Cain said to his brother Abel, Let's go out to the field. Whilst they were in the field, Cain attacked his brother Abel and killed him. Then the Lord said to Cain, Where is your brother Abel? I don't know, he replied. Am I my brother's keeper? Some of your Bibles do not have the phrase, Let's go out to the field, for it is not in the Hebrew Bible, but it is in the Greek Bible called the Septuagint. So, discuss together. What would motivate one to murder someone harmless? And then, how does one transgression usually lead to another? Even modern psychology is trying to deal with genuine evil. Four kinds of negativity types that have been recognized in Western psychology. The psychopathic, that is, those who have no feelings of love or mercy towards others. The narcissistic, who live only for themselves. The Machiavellians, who use power to manipulate others. And the sadistic, who enjoy watching others suffer. Comparing these with five personality types, which include those who are open to new experiences or not, those who are conscientious or not, those who are extrovert or more introvert, those who are agreeable or disagreeable, and those who are neurotic, that is to say, they have many contrary feelings and emotions. But Yahweh did curse Cain. The Lord said, What have you done? Listen, your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. Now you are under a curse and driven from the ground, which opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. When you work the ground, it will no longer yield its crops for you. You will be a restless wanderer on the earth. Is it possible to keep our crimes hidden from God and from others? And how do karma and justice differ? Justice can only be meted out by a live, intelligent, moral person, whereas karma simply does not exist. Cain, however, pleads with Yahweh. Cain said to the Lord, My punishment is more than I can bear. Today you are driving me from the land, and I will be hidden from your presence. I will be a restless wanderer on the earth, and whoever finds me will kill me. But the Lord said to him, Not so. Anyone who kills Cain will suffer vengeance seven times over. Then the Lord put a mark on Cain, so that no one who found him would kill him. Just what does God think about vengeance? Think of the verse, Vengeance is mine, says the Lord. And who was alive at that time who could find Cain? What other human beings were there? Consider a moment the biblical history of human habitation. So Cain went out from the Lord's presence and lived in the land of Nod, eastwards of Eden. Cain was then building a city. His descendant Lamech married two women. His descendants included those who live in tents and raise livestock, all who play stringed instruments and pipes, those who forged all kinds of tools out of bronze and iron. Cities, polygamy, tents, livestock, music. When did these arise in human communities? And metallurgy? When was the Bronze Age? When was the Iron Age? Consider a moment a secular history of human habitation. Paleo historians often talk about five phases of history. Prehistory, before the invention of writing, up till about 3000 BCE. Then ancient history, up till about 500 CE. Post-classical, from 500 CE to 
1500 CE, and the early modern period from 1500 to 1800, and the late modern period to the present time. The Bronze Age is generally considered to be from about 3300 BCE till about 1200 BCE, and the Iron Age between 1200 and 1000 BCE. In this text, we have an expression of primitive faith. Verse 16 told us that Cain went out from the Lord's presence, but in verse 26, at that time, people began to call on the name of the Lord, Yahweh. The verb translated began, in some verses, translates to proclaim or even to profane. This reminds us of Abraham, who built an altar to the Lord and called on the name of the Lord several times, as did his son Isaac and Isaac's son Jacob. When Moses was sent to the Israelites, God told him his name. He said, I am the Lord, the God of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob. Then the prophet Joel exclaimed, Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved a verse quoted in the book of Acts and in the epistle to the Romans. So then, let us believe in the Lord Jesus. Believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved, you and your household. Paul wrote, I have declared to both Jews and to Greeks that they must turn to God in repentance and have faith in our Lord Jesus. Thus, if you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, then you will be saved. So speak. Share together. What is some insight you learned or remembered from today's Bible text? Then what is some need or other request you want us to pray about, and then do so? And in conclusion, if you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, then you will be saved.